why is cybersecurity hygiene important for automation systems? So cybersecurity incidents have shown that there can be major consequences for automation systems. There have been incidences where attackers have been able to manipulate the human resource interface console directly. And it was only by chance that an operator in one particular instance happened to notice that his mouse pointer was moving across the screen and was clicking on certain valves to open them. Fortunately, for this particular installation, the attackers hadn't thought to disable the operator controls. Had they have done that, then the operator would have been helpless to have done anything about it. And as it happened, this was a, a water treatment plant. And what the hacker was trying to do was dump masses of doses of, of um, alkaline into the water to affect the pH level. So this was prevented by the prompt action of the operator. But had the console been disabled, he would not have been able to take control. Also, the number of cybersecurity incidents are rising alarmingly. And this poses significant potential risk for automation systems, especially those systems that are controlling hazardous processes. There was also an incident in a German steel mill where a, a hacker was able to get control and actually a, a worker was seriously burned as a result. It's only a question of time before something happens where there will be an unfortunate fatality. So of course when it comes to cybersecurity, what we have to look at is not just the how we're protecting the system, but we have to look at the all the links in the chain. And of course, the chain itself is only as strong as its weakest link. And that unfortunately often happens to be the human element. This is where the weakness occurs. So cybersecurity incidents have major consequences for automation systems. And as I've said already, there, there have been instances of wastewater and water treatment plants. There's been an incident in a steel mill. And the, the real major game changer in all of this was the Stuxnet incident in 2007. This was the first time that really that, that it was realized that control systems could be directly attacked and manipulated. And this, of course, was to do with the uranium enrichment plant in Iran that was using the Siemens PCS7. And the attackers were able to manipulate directly the, the Siemens PLC and the application and to start randomly opening and closing valves, which could have led to a major plant incident. As it was, it caused significant amount of damage to the, the equipment. And then Stuxnet, from there, it's been used as almost a, a blueprint for the production of malware and even some ransomware that's available on what they call the so-called dark web, where uh, people can get hold of this code and then they can use this as a basis for creating their own form of malware. So from that point onwards, it became very apparent that automation systems are very vulnerable to cybersecurity threats. Up to that point, it was only regarded as being the, the Windows-based portions of the system that would be vulnerable to potential cybersecurity attacks. Another incident that is worthy of mention is the Colonial Pipeline hack that occurred in May of this year. And in this instance, it was a ransom note that was sent to the pipeline by the criminal hacking group known as the Dark Side, or Dark Side. And they're believed to be based in Russia, although this hasn't been proven. This is the suspicion. And the attackers gained access to the corporate IT network 
through an unused virtual private network that enabled remote access to the corporate network. Now, the thing to remember about virtual private networks is that normally they have fairly sophisticated encryption and there's usually some form of multi-factor authentication. But in this case, this particular VPN account did not require multi-factor authentication. So the attackers were able to effectively establish remote access with just a compromised username and password. And this is why being very mindful of cyber hygiene, making sure that you don't use simple passwords or keep them in places where they can easily be accessed. This is something that needs to be thought about carefully. So they were able to get hold of the username and password. And because there was no authentication required other than that, they were able to gain access. And the thing about a virtual private networks is that once you establish that connection there's usually nothing in between so the access is immediate unless they go through a firewall where the rule sets are, are fairly well defined then the attackers have easy access to the network and that was the case here the incident and of course the the week long shutdown of the pipeline well, represented one of the most significant cyber instances during the year affecting critical infrastructure, so much so that it actually caused a spike in uh, fuel prices as a result. So these things are, are very important to bear in mind. And it's not just the infrastructure that's, that's vulnerable. It can be our own internal networks. So believe it or not, 90% of operational technology organizations have experienced some form of damaging attack, and this is in the last two years. And overall, it's estimated that 65% of all installed control systems, SCADA systems, supervisory control and data acquisition systems, remote terminal uh, units, as well as programmable logic controllers, etc. 65% of all of those installed have experienced some form of cyber incident. And if you think about the number of, of potential number of these systems that are around the world, that's a staggering number that have been affected by cybersecurity incidents. And these days, more attackers now, because of this ability to utilize that Stuxnet blueprint, are able to target OT systems more effectively. There have also been some very sophisticated ransomware and malware that's been introduced to help the attackers with getting access to systems. The other problem, of course, is aging automation systems often have known vulnerabilities, but there isn't a patch available. Some of the older systems that were using the, the Windows 2000, the Windows XP, for example, those, there must be hundreds of or thousands of those around the world, and they're not no longer supported. Microsoft stopped X, uh, supporting XP, I think, in 2014. But these systems are still there, and therefore they still have potential vulnerabilities. Also, you've probably heard of the Industrial Internet of Things, the IIoT, where there's now greater potential interconnectivity, as well as remote access to systems whether it's through the use of virtual private networks or if it's through the use of Wi-Fi or wireless communication, this interconnectivity is growing and growing. And along with it, therefore, is the potential for more possible entry points into a system. So this is one of the reasons why these attacks are rising and unfortunately are becoming quite successful. Coming back to our human aspect again, and where you as an individual can, can help with this. So with the human element, people themselves can make unintentional mistakes. And typically of the cyber attacks that occur, 80% 
are usually within the company itself, inside the boundary. And of those internal incidents, nearly 80% of those are all a result of unintentional attacks. It's what we call the stumbling, fumbling, bumbling. And this is because people don't realize and don't understand that their actions can oftentimes cause potential problems. So within these internal unintentional attacks, the majority come from the employee or contractor negligence and also as a result of identity theft or credential theft. So a lot of employees actually believe that their actions have no impact on security. And this is a perception that has to be overcome because they do have an impact on security and can inadvertently introduce problems. For example, plugging in affected media without realizing that the media is infected. And there was a case where a plant witnessed some problems with its control system, erratic behavior, and through the HMI. And what they discovered was that a virus had been introduced into the HMI. And when they went back and checked through all the logs, they found that during one of the night shift, one of the drives had been accessed. And this, this was, again, with some of the legacy systems, you have older machines that still have the floppy drive or the DVD drives installed. And so one of the machine's DVD drives had been accessed. And what they discovered was one of the night shift had decided to watch a movie because nothing much was going on. And he plugged in the DVD, which of course was infected. And this was transferred directly into the, the HMI machine. So things like that, it may have been unintentional, but as a result of doing that, it introduced the virus and caused, fortunately in this case, not too much damage, but still upset the way that the, the um, process was being run. So thinking about how the individual themselves can prevent things like that from happening, it's very simple, is really don't plug anything in to any port or download anything that without checking to make sure it's clean.